Let me tell you guys, I used to think that I was a humble person until they rejected my visa. I used to think that, you know, who I am, what I have, or what I don't have, or who I am not, does not affect the way I react to things. <laughs> I felt so angry. I felt so insulted. Funny thing is that I did not actually feel sadness, okay? The normal thing is when they reject your visa, you feel sad. I didn't feel sadness. I just felt anger and like, who do you guys think I am? <laughs> You know, and I think part of why I felt that way is that I felt like you guys are rejecting me visa thinking that I'm not going to come back to my country I'm like you think that a whole me as I am like this I will leave my children and my husband in Nigeria and then look for backyard ways to enter your country I do not see express entry. I do not see work permit. I'll be work visa I do not see any type of legal means of entering your country i want to now use visitors visa enter then now stay and now can start doing in your country that's even very hard to start with <laughs> i was like hey eh. let me know if you guys have felt that way and let me know if you have been rejected visa let me know how you reacted to it how did you feel about it because I felt insulted. Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be telling you all how my visa was rejected by Canada or the embassy or whatever, whoever rejects visa. My visa was rejected and then less than a month later, my visa was approved and I was like, <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> anyway, let me just start from the beginning, okay? So in February, sometime in February, my mom and I were planning to visit Canada, okay, we're planning to visit Canada in summer. So in February, we decided to just apply for our visa. So we did not use any agent or anything. We did it ourselves because I don't know what an agent is going to do for me, okay? It's not easy, it's not an easy process, so let me not lie. It's not an easy, it's not like you just click one or two buttons and then you're done with the application. No, it's actually quite a lot. So many things to fill, so many things to put, so many things to add, you know, anyway, but we decided to just go ahead and do it ourselves, okay, basically me and my sister. So, my sister has PR, she lives in Canada with her family, and she also has a good job here, so we didn't even think that it was going to be a problem getting the visa, okay. For my mom's own, I think our, our main concern at that time was that we, we were hoping that we would get it quickly enough to make it you know, to Canada during the summer because we wanted to come, you know, when every the weather is okay and we'll just come and have fun and go back to our countries, okay? We're not trying to come and escape into the Canadian system that is even half of people that came legally and now come and be doing backyard runs. Like, it wasn't anybody's plan. <laughs> definitely not mine and definitely not my mom's, okay? But, you know, so we knew that my mom's home was going to come m m much, much easier or more quickly or whatever. We knew that was going to happen because we've heard stories of other people here who have PR, who filed for their parents and who applied for their parents and their parents' visas got approved quickly, okay? So, for my mom's own, it was not a problem, but for my own, we were just hoping that it would come out in time for us to make it here in, you know, summer. We were planning to come around May, June, July, I think. That was our plan then. Mind you, my sister was not even pregnant at that time. So it wasn't like we were planning to come for a mugo or anything. No, she wasn't even pregnant at that time. So we were just planning to come on vacation. Yeah, my mom. Okay. So now I live in Port Harcourt and you know, as every other thing goes with Port Harcourt, most of the things that are very important are not in Port Harcourt, which is so annoying. <laughs> so most of these embassies, most of these visa offices and stuff like that, they are not in Port Harcourt, including places for medicals and stuff. They are not in Port Harcourt. It's just recently that we got a few of them. But as at that time, if you wanted to apply for visas, especially for Canadian visa, you have to go to either Abuja or Lagos. So we chose Abuja because we don't like anything Lagos. Like, <laughs> I don't even pass through Lagos to travel. Like, if I can help it, I would not even travel from Lagos, okay? So if the flight is no day Port Harcourt, I would choose Abuja next, right? So even for the visa application, we chose VFS Global Abuja or something like that. I don't know if it's called VFS or TLC or something. Like I can't remember, but we shall choose Abuja for the whole thing, okay? So we did all the application online, so many forms to fill, so many, you guys, you go fill form, you go tire. You go remember information, you go tire because you have to fill your, like for me now, I have to fill my parents' information, my information, my spouse's information, all my children's information, and all my siblings' information, okay? So you have to have all those information on hand, their age, their name, where they live, and um, you know, other things about them, their age and stuff like that, what they do for a living, right? So for me, it was a no-brainer. I mean, my brother works here, he works in a very good company here, my sister works here, she works in a very good company here, you know, my brother-in-law is, is doing well. Like, everybody's just, you know, uh -uh, we're set. So I never for once thought that they're going to reject me visa. 
and I have never been rejected visa before now so I just felt like okay it was just going to delay because I've heard of so many people that they delayed their visa their visa time passed then the visa now came out or something like that so I heard of someone that even got her own after two years even though I think that that COVID incident had a lot to do with the delays at that time but you know we're still in post-covid era so we're still not um things have not yet returned back to normal so i was expecting some type of delay not rejection anyway so after we finished all the application we got our appointment dates we booked our flight and then booked a hotel and then we flew to abuja we stayed in a hotel and uh, just one day anyway we stayed in a hotel for one night then during the day we went for the application and then after that we went to the airport the visa the application process that is going to the going for capturing right yes it's capturing the capturing process was quite easy and it was easier for me because i was with my mom who is elderly so you know they give preferences to elderly people so anywhere we go they'll just be like hey okay um madam come to the front i'm not like no i'm the one doing it for her so, okay go go so we entered fairly quickly even though the crowd there was a lot when i saw the crowd i was like where all of una they go where all of una they go when i think say una go vote uh, uh, to nibu finish they can't leave the country they will not approve your visa okay they will not approve your pr you want to vote to nibu finish and now run and leave us there be, no, no 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 you will stay back with us but anyway so many people were there like there were a lot of people there so i was like okay fine but you know the whole thing went smoothly we were done i think our our time was 10 a.m or 9 a.m it was 10 a.m. but we were done by 11 or something like that or 11.20 so if I had even known, I was even saying if I had known I would have chosen an afternoon flight because I saw an afternoon flight that was conducive but I didn't want with an airline I like with Ibom Air I saw afternoon flight but I didn't want to risk it so I chose a, 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 a piece that I don't like but I was like ah, if I had known I would just chose my Ibom Air but anyway no wahala we are good we can wait at the um at the airport so we even went we went to eat after eating we went back to the airport and then waited for our flight by 5 pm and then we flew back to port harcourt and all was well and good now the waiting time began so we kept waiting for our visas to come and then shortly after i think like maybe a month after or two months after i think it was a month after it wasn't that long my mom's um visa came at that day asked her to send her passport for stamping because they don't collect your passports okay when you go for capturing they take all your details you're talking to the camera so many details here stamp here stamp here sign here sign here all those kind of things yeah. check your documents and stuff but they don't collect they'll check your your passport but they don't collect your passport okay is when they now when they now grant you visa in quotes then they will ask you to send your passport for stamping so they asked my mom to send her passport for stamping and then she okay so i was like okay ah fine we knew that my mom's own will come out quickly so we quickly sent my mom's own they stamped it and returned her passport mind you all this time i never even hear me i never even hear it be like say <laughs> i was just silence my email was silence i was like i hey, know what they will still give me we knew my own would delay but you know <sighs> time was now passing the summer one was now coming we're like what is happening because my mom cannot travel without me okay that was the plan they were like my mom cannot travel without me like we have to go together because of so many factors like it, it, it was it would have been better for two of us to travel together so we didn't want to go ahead and book her flight and everything not seeing my own because it would be somehow so we were now waiting we were now waiting 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 and at that time i also applied for another visa with that one is the story for another day another insult upon injury <laughs> i got rejected visa to two different countries right but that's a whole story time on i'll give a different day let's talk about canada first it's today's canada's time when, when we reach the other country's time i will table their matter so that period i now went to apply for the second that other country's visa but i couldn't drop my passport with them because i was like I don't want to drop my passport with them and then Canada will now tell me to come and drop my own passport and I'm like, my passport is another um, country or a country's embassy or whatever. Okay, later on, I now found out that even if during that period they had asked me to submit my passport, I could have um, applied for extension or something like that because they'll tell you that you have 30 days from when you get that mail to submit your passport, okay? But I think you can apply for extension and tell them that, oh, maybe within 13 days I'm not in the country or I'm not with my passport or whatever, let me apply for another 30 days, you know, extend it or whatever, anyway. But at that time I did not know, so I was like, no, I cannot submit my passport in the other country I went to. For, for the other visa, I have to hold on to my passport. So in the other visa, the other visa place, I told, I paid to hold my passport back so i'm just saying all this so you guys will know how much i wasted during this period 
So I paid the other embassy to hold my passport because I was waiting for Canada to call me to submit my passport. That was how I waited though. April passed, May passed, June passed. Ah, ah. I was like, okay, just give me feedback now. At least tell me, okay, uh, due to delay, due to this, we're not yet responding to you, but we're going to you soon. So I'm like, I was like, just give me some kind of feedback. What kind of silence is it? Why are you ghosting me? What did I do to you now? Like, <laughs> anyway, so that was how I waited June, um, June now passed, then July now came. First of all, within that time, my visa to the other country was rejected and I was so pissed. Oh, they showed me pepper. Imagine never being rejected visa all your life, only for you to be rejected back to back. <laughs> back to back. I was like, I'm busy because I made videos that I don't I want to jack You know, I've made videos about it, about how oh I'm traveling to Canada, even though at the end of the video, I'll be like, no, I'm not going anywhere. This is still my country. I'm not one of those people. But you know, these are the reasons why I feel like, you know, it would be a good idea to jack I was like, I'm busy because I made those videos. Did they see my social media and feel like I'm trying to jackpot by all means. I don't, I don't know because anybody who watches my channel know that I just renovated my house. I just did a whole renovation of my house, decoration and everything. So anyway, there's no place my mind did not go to. So that country rejected me visa. I was like, oh, well, I'm good, fine. Because I was supposed to go for vacation to the other country as well. Oh, well, I'm good, no, well, hella, fine. This one was more important to me because the other country zone, it was just a matter of, eh, let me just go because of, you know, some people are going. It wasn't something that I was really hungry for, okay? But the Canada one self, I was like, <laughs> this is the one that's more important to me. I want to come and see my family. I want to come and see my brother. So I now waited. That was how July now came. I now got the mail. When I saw the mail, I was like, ah, let me check, let me check, let me check. Only for me to open mail and see your application was rejected or something, 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 because you could not prove there are reasons basically okay i don't i don't know the exact english but the summary of everything they told me is that i couldn't prove to them that i was going to come back to nigeria <laughs> hey me me i couldn't prove to them that i was going to come back to nigeria okay now i use my um accounts for you know um, proof of funds. I don't know if I'll call it proof of funds, but I use my statement of accounts because I mean I have money in my account. I even use my job Google, I, YouTuber, Google, whatever. It wasn't enough for them, and I don't blame them with the job part, right? Because as a YouTuber, you can do YouTube from any, from anywhere, so that's not a reason why you cannot run away. Okay, so I will, I will give them that. I will give them that. Let me just give them that one, okay? But every other thing they said there, it made no sense to me because I put all my children's details, date of birth. It's many for me to even draw birth mark and, and, and put blood group on that thing. They asked me so many details. So you can see that person has a husband who is working in Nigeria and working in, you know, a good place. You can see that person has three children in Nigeria because I had even added my husband's, um, what did I even add for my husband? I think it's just his workplace because yeah, they'll ask you where he works, right? I put his office there, you know. Details that I thought that you know when they see they'll say okay this person has a family this person has children you know I was like I even put up my my handle so that when you see my handles you will see that I, like I'm not hungry I'm not suffering right it was not enough my dear brothers and sisters it was not enough mind you my sister also added her own pay slipo she added her own everything but the PR everything she added this my brother's details had everything was there but when we start analyzing it right when I started thinking about it like okay Forget the whole family part because it's possible they did not even check my YouTube channel. It's possible they did not even check, you know, my kids and all of that, right? The fact that my brother is here, my sister is here, and my mom has gotten visa and stuff like that. I was like, maybe they think that me, I'm just looking for a way to share, come and stay with my siblings. Anyhow, anyhow, just come and jack by here and my siblings will also help me to try and, you know, stay here illegally. That's what I was just thinking. Maybe that's what they think, okay? I won't give that one to them. I don't say I'll give it to them. I don't give it to them, okay? Because that's a very, very nonsense analysis. Because people that want to run to this country, they, they escape every day. Now we, we go, they give them visa. But people like us that are legit coming to come and vac vacation here and go back, we're not going to give us visa, okay? So I don't give that one to them, okay? That their analysis is very, very flawed. And it's quite sad because the money that you pay for all these visa fees are quite expensive, okay? Vis applying for visa in Nigeria, it doesn't matter the type of visa you're applying for, it is quite expensive. So, now your analysis is no follow, you no follow because, anyway, <laughs> let me not get angry. So, when I saw my visa was rejected, hey, you guys, I was so mad. I was like, who, who the hell, who the hell do you think I am that you will not give me visa? Who, what are you people saying me as? Look at, look at these people, I was like, look at this. <laughs> 
I was like, look at this people. He so people are looking down on me. People think that me, I want me, like I want to I want to run away and come to your country illegally. Like I didn't see all the legal means all my mates have been using since now to do desert worker. I want to come and do here. Anyway, I was so mad. But at that time, my sister was already pregnant. So I didn't even have time to be there just because left for me, eh, I won't apply again. No. The other country that rejected me visa, I didn't apply again. People were telling me, no, just try, reapply, add this, add that. I was like, I'm not applying shit. Like, I'm not, like, who wants to come to your country? I better get out. <laughs> so the other countries, so I didn't even reapply. I was like, rubbish. Come on, be going. What am I going to do in your country? It's not like, uh, I beg. Anyway, but this Canada home, because of my sister, I just, I just couldn't even carry my anger to that level, I was like, I have to reapply immediately. So, people I talked to kept telling me, in fact, somebody, one of my friends told me that I should not reapply immediately, that if I reapply immediately, they will think that I'm very desperate, that's why. I was like, but I don't have a choice. November is coming here. November is, this was July, ending of July, August, okay? Ending of July, basically. I think he entered August, or this was, at, or, or, I can't remember, but I know it was ending of July, right? So like November is just around the corner and this Canada people take so much time in responding to you about your visa. I can't even, November is my sister's due date, you know, yeah. So I can't even say, let me wait and pretend that I'm not desperate. I'm desperate, please. I'm desperate to come and help my sister. So please, I cannot even pretend. I was like, I just have to shoot my shots again and whatever happens, happens. But I cannot just, I cannot just stay back and say, let me give it some more time so that it's not look as if. Let it look. Let it look. I don't have a choice. So the moment I got my rejection letter, let's say I got the rejection letter today, let's say today was a Thursday, by Monday I reapplied again and I think that Monday was already in August, right? Yeah, I think that Monday was August but by Monday I, I reapplied again. I remember it came on a Thursday, I used Friday to print and gather all my Google book that I wanted to get and also get because, okay, now, because of how I was rejected visa the first time and they said I wasn't able to prove that I was going to come back to Nigeria, I decided to use my husband as sponsor. Okay, because before I used myself as sponsor, I used my account details, I sent, you know, I showed them funds in my account. So I used myself as sponsor and the money in my account was enough to sponsor me three times self or something like that. So I didn't think that it was going to be a problem, right? However, when we were analyzing the whole thing, if I use myself as sponsor, it means that I don't need my husband, basically. Do you understand? So I don't need him. And if I don't need him, then I can actually run away without him or something like that. I, that's what I was analyzing, you know. So we decided that, oh, and also I talked to IJ, IJ's corner. If you guys know her, she talks about Canada stuff a lot. So I just told IJ, IJ, see what's happening. This people don't reject me visa, eh? So she now explained to me that, ah, no, that <laughs> it does not work like that. Though. I was like, what kind of misogynistic <laughs> what kind of misogynistic system is this where i have to prove that my husband is taking care of me so that i will not run away i don't it was annoying to me i was like does my husband have to prove that but actually he, he does do i think i think for married men as well if you're married and you know you have to prove i don't know i don't know i don't know if it works the other way around but for you know for me I had to use my husband as my sponsor, so that was the thing I just told him that I need, I need his pay slip, I need letter from his company, and I need um, his account um, statement to prove that, you know, he has the funds to sponsor me. Thankfully, my husband was around that Friday, okay, that period, so, you know, he went to the bank, got his bank statement, got me the letter from his company, um, you know, pay slips and stuff like that. Um, what does he even give to me that period? I think that was all. Then the sponsor letter of sponsorship, okay? He also gave me that. And then, you know, we then attached my sister's um, hospital, the letter from hospital that shows her due date and all of that. I think her x-ray, I don't know what it was, yeah, but we attached my sister's this thing to show that she's pregnant and her due date was in November, okay? Because my travel date was actually November as well. So we had to add all those things to show them that she's not coming here, not her place, coming here to come and, you know, help her sister. I had to beef up my application the next time and add my husband this time as sponsor, as per Ekpele, I don't get money, I don't be person. Nah, 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 the man will marry me, they take care of me. Anyway, let me not even vex, because that thing is so misogynistic. It was even part of my anger, like, so you think that I am a nobody, that somebody else has to come and prove that taking care of me for you to give me visa. What's that again? <laughs> mind yourself but anyway i now 
attach all those things on Monday. I reapplied immediately. I did not even wait for anything. I reapplied, and then the waiting game now continued. This time, I was just firing prayer. I was like, God, I beg. God, I beg. I was praying. My sister was praying. Everybody was praying. We're like, God, I beg. What we were planning was that, okay, worst case scenario, if they don't give me, then my mom will have to come by herself, right? And, you know, then when I said, okay, let's even process my father's own as well, so that worst case scenario, my father and my mother will come together, or, you know, my mom will come by herself, but, you know, we still had backup, which was my mom. But we are still praying for my own, you know, praying, praying, praying. And then, less than how many weeks later? It was not like three weeks later or something like that. I got the letter to submit my passport. And I was like, <laughs> oh, <don't go. laughs> I felt good. I was like, you want to reject me, Visa? No, no, you need me in your country. You should be begging me. You should be begging me to come and visit. You should be doing all expense paid trip for me to come and visit your country. Eh? And you're rejecting me visa. Anyway, and guess what guys? They gave me... Okay, technically what they gave me is a 10 year visa. Okay, and why I say it's technically is that they give you the duration of your passport. So if my... Because my, my passport is a 10 year passport, right? But I've already used 2 years. Like my passport was... I, think I got my passport 2 years ago or so so it was now eight years remaining so they gave me eight years visa in fact my visa expires a day before my passport expires so your girl here for the next eight years can breeze in and breeze out of this country if i feel like it if they beg me enough i can breeze in and breeze out <laughs> you know but yeah like that experience taught me something shout like it taught me that girl you're not humble you're not humble that condition of course <laughs> Like condition cosa but anyway let's forget about this humility talk um i feel like every nigerian should be sad for this whole visa situation that we're having in our country because why is it that upstanding citizens you don't have any bad track record you're just a good citizen you do your job you make your money you live in peace you're not fighting anybody you're not you're not uh, committing any crime why should it be difficult for us to get visa to all these countries Worst of all, if I if they even rejected me PR, I even understand that one. I'll say, okay, you don't need more people to come and work on in your country. You no know, one like, even though I know that they need, okay. But I'll say, okay, you don't need more people to come and work. You don't need more people to come and take your government resources. Okay, no, all well and good, fine. Even though I know that they need it, right? They need us very well, right? I can I can understand that one. But rejecting me visitors visa, I want to come and visit, spend money in your country and go. You're rejecting it because of the country I come from, or because of all these things that happen. Because it's, I think it's just the country basically. Because they believe that oh, Nigerians are looking for how to jackpot by any means, so you you have to be careful the way you give Nigerians visa. I don't know, but that's what I feel is the problem. So every Nigerian that's watching this video, especially if you're living in Nigeria, you should be concerned though. And now. The person we have as president is not even someone that has a good track record, international track record. So we are just going to be seen as a bunch of Yahoo Yahoo 419 drug dealers. That's how they see the whole country. So before they give you visa, they will you check know, your application. Like they will use magnifying glass, extra eye spectacle to use and check your application. And even at that, they can still reject you on the flimsiest reason ever, flimsiest excuse ever. You know, so. You have to be worried though. It's not something to be laughing about. It's not something to even just, you know, take lightly because you don't know when you will need visa for something important that they will reject you for one flimsy reason. I've seen people who were rejected visa even when they have gotten scholarship to to study certain things in certain countries. Like they rejected them visa. They have full scholarship, full everything, and they, are con they, they were rejected visa. So you are, <laughs> don't, don't take it lightly. It's not a funny thing because you don't know when you will need that visa and then they will reject you for something stupid. So anyway, that's just it. That's just my story of how I got my visa. I'm thankful. I'm happy. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm in the country. Now I can make noise. Now I can talk about it because I'm already in your country. Worst case scenario, now go deport me tomorrow. <laughs> Worst case scenario, after people watch my video, you pull vex and deport me. But you cannot do that, okay? And I, I'm leaving. I already have my, my, my uh, what they call it, my flights booked and everything. So I'm leaving your country very soon. But anyway, let me know um, if you guys were rejected visa to Canada and if you were then giving visa afterwards what did you do differently between your first application and your second application um if you have been rejected visa and you are just waiting don't wait there's no point waiting okay gather everything you need to prove to them that you can actually 
come back to your country if it's visitor visa if it's visitors visa that you want and if it is PR that you want then start working towards it start gathering enough evidence enough funds enough everything enough you know documentation for it okay there's no point just sitting there and feeling sorry about you for yourself because you'll be feeling sorry and time will just be passing okay I do not even have that kind of time to feel sorry for myself I just reapplied look at now Thursday Monday I reapplied and I got my eight years visa but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys